Hey everybody, tonight we're supposed to find the ceiling of a solution to a logarithmic equation. Now let me just write down an example, a concrete example of what we mean by ceiling. Um, let's take a, let's, let's see, I'm just making this up here. The square root of 37 is a number slightly bigger than uh, 6, since the square root of 36 is 6. So I'm going to look at this inequality and find the ceiling of this number from this inequality. So we know that the square root of 37 is a, little bit, a number a little bit bigger than 6. So a number a little bit bigger than 6 divided by 2 is a, is a little bit bigger than 3. Okay, but this, this, and it's also less than 4. There's no doubt about that. Right, because uh, what would we have to do? We'd have to go all the way up to 8 over 2 to just to get to 4. So we know that this number square root of 37 over 2 is a number strictly between 3 and 4, and it's much, much closer to 3 than 4. Okay. Now the ceiling of that number, and I forget what, these are square brackets. They're different than, the, it's the same idea as the floor function, except you're just going in the opposite direction. The, the ceiling of a number is the least integer greater than the number, okay? So the ceiling of the square root of 37 um, over two, since this number has been shown to be a number trapped between 3 and 4 is equal to 4. Now, just as a side here, uh, we're not doing this in this problem. The floor of that very same number would be 3, okay? And the floor equations are a little bit more common in these contest problems, I think. But uh, anyway, based on this inequality we've written over here to the left, we have the ceiling. Again, this is called the ceiling. This is called the floor and they're equal to 4 and 3 respectively, okay? So we're looking to find the ceiling of the solution to this logarithmic equation, which has an unusual base less than 1. So let's get busy on that. Now, you guys, from, I'm not going to review logarithms too much, but every logarithmic statement, a logarithm is an exponent, so it always has a corresponding exponential equation. And so this would be that equation. x would be equal to 5 eighths, which is the base of the logarithm statement raised to the minus four thirds power. Now remember what a negative exponent means. It means this, okay? So let's keep going. Now, um, so here we go. Uh, I just rewritten it right here. Now, you know, what I did, I switched over to radical notation just because I kind of like it slightly better. Uh, notice this is true because the cube root of eight is two. The cube root, this three right here, corresponds to cube root cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of 5, we just write it as the cube root of 5, and we still have to raise that to the fourth power. Now, what I'm going to do, folks, is go ahead. You can We can do this. Uh, if we raise this to the fourth power, we just have the cube root of 625 over 16. And so I'm just going to invert that right now. So we'll have 16 over okay, uh, the cube root of 625. You know, again, it's fairly clear what, what I did there. Uh, 2 raised to the 4th power is 16. And the cube root of 5 raised to the 4th power is the cube root of 625. Uh, 625 is 5 raised to the 4th power. Okay? So we get this. Now, this is equal to um, um, x. Okay? Now, do we know enough about this number to actually um, figure out what its uh, ceiling would be? Okay? This is the answer. But what, what is its ceiling? Is it a number uh, that we can tell much about? Well, the cube root of 625 is kind of hard to evaluate. We have an integer in the numerator, but we do know that we can rewrite this as 16 over 5 because 125 is a cubic factor of 625, namely 5 times 125 is 625. And so you would get 5, okay, here times the cube root of 5. Cube root of 5. Now we're still in this position here. We have 16 over 5, which is 3, right? It's larger than 3, but we're multiplying the denominator by a number bigger than 1, so we might expect this to be a num number between 2 and 3. 
but let, let's see uh, let's see what else we can do with this, folks. Notice that if we multiply top and bottom, uh, this is called rationalizing. Um, we can multiply top and bottom by the cube root of five squared, which is twenty-five, right? Again, we multiply through by a cleverly disguised version of one. Now, what's the motivation for this? We're trying to see if we can discern what the ceiling should be here. And it's kind of hard to do from here, you know, without a calculator. But what is this equal to? See, uh, we would have this part right here. Uh, this would be the cube root of 125, which is 5. And so what we would end up with here, folks, would be 16. Okay, uh, times the cube root of 25 upstairs. Okay, but what's going to be left downstairs? Okay, we already have a 5 here, but then the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 25 is the cube root of 125, which is 5 again. So you see this would be all over 25. Okay, so now what can we do about all this? Um, it looks like, okay, this number, this number right here would be a number, cube root of 25 is a number somewhere between, let's just write this over to the right. Um, let's see, the cube root of 25 would be a number between 2 and 3, right? Let's write that down. And that's pretty easy to see. Uh, or would it be between 3 and 4? No, 2 and 3. It would be between 2 and 3, right? The cube root of 25 is between 2 and 3. You know, why is that true? Well, 2 cubed is 8, but 3 cubed is 27, right? So 25 is between 8 and 27. So you see what that means? This number would be between 2 and 3. It wouldn't even be as big as 3. And so you see, this would be a number that would still be uh, less than... Let me just write this down. This would be clearly less than 50... Uh, let me write this down. 50 over 25. Which is equal to 2, right? Now, how do we know that, folks? Well, we ju just assume this was 3, and it's not even 3, right? But assume it was 3, you would have 3 times 16, which is 48 over 25, which is certainly uh, less than 2. And I just use 50 as a conservative. So we have less than, so it's, it's a number that's uh, less than 2. Here, let me just write it down. Uh, so we know that 1 is less than x is less than 2 without using a calculator. Ain't that nice? Okay. But by the original example, that means the ceiling of x equals 2. And again, y'all, I may not have made it clear at the beginning, but you're not supposed to use calculators on this stuff. That would take all the fun out of this. All right. So anyway, that's what we were looking for. Now, we could have just say solve the equation. You know, we could have said solve the equation, and this would have been the solution to the equation. If it, that's, that, that is just equal to x, right? So we did solve the equation. But the, the instructions were to find the ceiling, and we've shown uh, incontrovertibly that the ceiling of x is equal to 2. Okay, folks. Uh, ceiling of x equals to 2. Okay, thanks for viewing.